Hello and welcome to another episode of Boxing TV. We bring the fighters to the fans. Coming up on today's show, WBA International Super Featherweight Champion, Tasha Jonas. Stay tuned. A massive welcome to my next guest, who I'm extra excited to speak with, uh, Miss Natasha Jonas. Natasha, how are you doing? You well? I'm good, yeah, thank you. Very well. Bless Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. No, pleasure is absolutely all mine. So for the people, I'm sure everybody knows who you are, but for the people who don't know you, um, very, very well thought of and a, a great name in the world of female boxing and boxing in general. Um, you are now 9-1 and one as a, a professional, former WBA international champion. Um, so what we'd like to do, we'd like to do something a little bit different here. It's not just, hi, how you been, blah, blah, blah. We'd like to get the, to know the person um, behind the gloves. Um, so let's start right from the very, very beginning. What got you into boxing? Oh, wow. It seems so, so long ago now. Um... <laughs> I got into boxing totally by chance and by by mistake, really. Um, I'd just come off a scholarship in America um, and I'd injured myself playing football and it meant I'd um, never play football again. Okay. So I come home and... I, so I left the scholarship because I, I, did, I, couldn't, I didn't really go there for the academic side. I, I wanted to play football. I thought I was going to be the next Mia Hamm. Okay. Um, so then I started, I'd come home, obviously my injury meant that I, I tore my cruciate ligament in my knee. Um, it meant that I, I didn't right. do any exercise for a year. Um, so after a year, obviously, you know, of not doing any exercise for someone like me who was so active, I'd put on a lot of weight. I'd lost okay. the whole friendship group because I wasn't playing football anymore. All right. Um, nice of them. I'd, I'd lost like a load of confidence as well because okay. maybe from the, I'm motivation. Um, I was in and out of jobs for a whole whole year because, um, like I say, sport was my motivation to do anything. Um, and then I went to my uncle's karate gym, which is, you know, just a karate gym. It's got, you know, free weights, a uh, running machine um, and a bag. And I, I used to just go in and hit it. So can I have a set of keys, you know, just trying to get myself back into something. Um, I'd just been sacked from my last job. And I was like, something needs to change. And yeah. there was a lady who lived over the road from his, his gym who watched me going in and out. And she was like, I see you going in and out all the time. Like, who are you? And what, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you know, I'm just trying to train and get a bit, bit motivated, lose a bit of weight. Okay. She was like, oh, you know, I've started a women's only boxing night at the, at the local gym in the Rotunda. She said, have you ever thought about boxing? And I thought to myself, like boxing, no. But I didn't. I didn't do that today. I was like, oh god, yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. good. Um, I'll come next week. And for weeks and weeks and weeks, she kept on pestering me to go, and I wouldn't go. I was like, I, I just didn't didn't like the thought of it. I didn't want to do it. And then just to shut her up in the end, I was like, right, I'll go. And I, the next time she asked me, I'll say I didn't like it, so I'm not going back. Okay. So I could just say that. And then I went, right. and then I absolutely loved it, and never ever looked back. Brilliant. And what a gym as well. I mean, just to accidentally stumble across. Uh, it's not a bad gym to start at, is it? Yeah, well, when I initially started, um, like I say, there was um, Sylvia was the highest um, level female coach and the only, like, I think, level three female coach at the time. Uh-huh. Um, and quickly she said, right, you're good enough to box if you want to. And I was like, I wasn't doing anything better. I didn't have a job. I didn't have, wasn't doing anything. I was like, go ahead, put my name down. I'll do it. It was like the the, the local, sh- the, the home show in the Adelphi Hotel. And then wow. once I had that fight and, and I started winning, um, I was hooked ever since. But because that was just a fitness class initially that she did, I had to join like the lads kind of thing in the boxing class because the Rotunda's okay. got a fitness class in the day. And a, and a boxing class, which is only for the amateurs uh-huh. at the night. And she was like, right, well, if you don't want to do the fitness side anymore and you do want to box, you're going to have to join the lads. And I was like the only girl there for, for quite some time. Um, yeah. But it's good to see, go, go, go back now and see that there's so many girls in there. They're and, so and good. And don't see people as, as 
the female boxers and the male boxers. They're just the boxers, and you're training your age category and your, you know, your your compens your competi- competency. I can't say it. Like right. your level, <laughs> <laughs> your competency. Is that what you're going exactly. with? That's there we go. Mean. I'll look after you. I promise. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, so you were saying about the football thing then? So you were you were really good football. Am I right in thinking that you played for Liverpool? At one stage, yeah. At one stage, yeah. No yeah got me love. Liverpool staff Shane Jonas at the back. How's made up with that? <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. I absolutely love it. I mean, it's it, it's just weird. You get these little forks in the road, don't you, in your life? And I mean, me, I, I, I'm massive into, into of course, boxing media since I, I couldn't find him. I had a bad injury. But I was a singer and I, I sang all around the world and I chose my singing of my boxing and now it's my boxing of my singing. I mean, it's weird how you do these little, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, what the kind of forks in the road, aren't they? But what a fork in the road it's been for you, mate. I mean, absolutely next level. Am I right in thinking that you're the first ever female boxer for GB? You've got to tell me about that. So um, when we, in 2009, when they decided it was going to be in the Olympics for the first time, um, Great Britain had to make an Olympic team. So, you know, people from Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England all went to the assessments and there was only there was only three weights in that time. Okay. Um so and there was three people that was able to be funded per weight. Um so luckily I like well not luckily, it was the hard work, but I was yeah. selected as one of the nine in the original team. Um and then we had the so the first time we ever represented the country was in the Atlantic Cup. Um, and that was obviously us versus um, the, the USA. And, yeah, I was the first person to box. Um, Nicola Adams at the time was injured. And I don't think he had anyone for Nina Smith at the time. So it was me, the 60 next up, next up and, and we boxed, yeah. Amazing. And, and tell us, you know, what you, what, you know, because this goes out to all around the world, you know, the people might have never seen you before over in the US, that kind of thing. So um, tell us kind of about the things you did achieve in, in your amazing amateur career. Um, God, I hate, I hate like talking about this. <laughs> like that. Um, I've been the five times ABA champion, I think, at like four different weights. Because uh, I originally started boxing at 72 kilos, believe it or not. And now I'm a super featherweight in, in the field game. So, uh, I went to lose weight and I, I got I got, I got got that in the end. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Um, so I'm two times GB champion. Um, I've won the EU championships a couple of times. Um, the best, I've won a bronze and a silver in the Europeans. And a bronze in the world as well. Wow, you, my mate, come on! You, I can understand what you mean. Why you know you'd like because you feel like you're kind of blowing your own trumpet, I suppose, mm-hmm. don't you? But no, God, what an achievement! What what an achievement! Brilliant. Um, so you then come on to be a professional, and you've had a, a great um, start to your career. You won your first title um, against Tausi Laji, didn't you? Um, the WBA mm-hmm. international uh, title. Uh, talk us through that fight. Yeah, it was in my hometown at Liverpool, so um, I really wanted to put on a show, and I think I put on a little bit of too much pressure on yourself. You, you know what it's like when you when you box at home, and it was on the um, Amir Khan undercard, so it was like a packed out stadium, and I just wanted to impress. And I, I didn't really box that great, if I'm honest. Um, but I caught her with a shot that she just didn't recover from in the sixth or seventh round, and uh, ended up winning. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. And and from then you then you lost your last your your, your uh, next fight, didn't you? Um, against um, Vivian Obernorth. I want to ask you a question from me to you. Forgetting anybody else watching, just from me to you. You just, for me, you just didn't see yourself that night. And I was always so impressed with you. But for just was was there something more that was going on? You know, at, at that time because I, it just didn't seem like it was you. I know a couple of people have said that. Um... I, I, there's there's not a single thing that I can put it down to if I'm honest. Um, okay. We'd worked out tactics, um, and we worked like the only shot she had is the one she hit me, with, and we'd gone over months and, and months of that. And I got caught with it. I reacted emotionally, and yeah. I kept on getting caught after that. And I just 
I just didn't recover. Fair enough. It just seemed like it was so out of character for you. And even since then, I mean, you've you've won three more fights now, I believe, since then, and you're back to your best. So awesome. And and talking about your career as a whole, obviously you've got some big fights coming up. But um, what do you hope to achieve in your career as a professional? When I like returned from from the amateurs, it was to be the best, and that's what I want. I think that. WBC is one of the most prestigious belts in boxing and, and you know, the IBO as well comes with it in, yeah. in this next group. And I think that just, even though as successful as my career has been on paper and sounds for me personally as an athlete and results wise, I, I always wanted to do better. You know, I, I believe that I was good enough to get an Olympic medal and it didn't. I was believed that I was good enough to win the Commonwealth and it didn't. Uh-huh. So um, I think, you know, being able to, be the best um, and have that world title in professional boxing will just yeah. draw a line in the hand for me personally, not for anybody else, but for me. Yeah, just something you want to personally achieve. Yeah, I yeah, like definitely. Yeah, I like it. And, you know, as far as kind of, you know, this good on you as well and you know good on you and good on all of these ladies that are, um finally after all this time that you know female boxing is starting to to grow now and you've seen the main events which i absolutely love i have some great friends in uh, who are female boxers but you know for people out there you know young ladies you know not just young ladies you know young fighters coming through thinking about taking up boxing um what advice would you give to them you know, I, it's mad because I, I used to do a lot of work for um, Sky Sports in schools and I, I used to work with 75 other athletes and very few, of the, I think it was only about four of them athletes that finished in the sport that they started in. So there, there is a really? lot of transfer skills and, you know, like me playing football and then I've moved over to boxing. So once one door shuts, don't think that it's shut forever. Do you know what I mean? I would, I would yeah. say take every opportunity when they come because opportunities are there you just got to see them as opportunities you know if you work hard try your best never give up but most of all believe in yourself even when nobody else does anything is possible i am living proof for that and what have you got to say to to your adoring fans out there you know tune in thank you for the support as always you know you've followed me from the amateurs all the way through and you know, massive respect because I've always been positively supported and and well-backed and I I respect that. Not every female fighter can say that. Thanks for having me on and thanks for the support from yourself as well. Pleasure. 